everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be about souvenirs from the White City, from the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. I was actually in Chicago not that long ago, and I went looking for what remnants I could find of the fair that still exists today, and you have to dig a little bit, because every building constructed for the fair for the so-called White City was intended to be temporary. All but one of the buildings was made to be brought down. So if you go to Chicago, there's one building you can see still in its original location. And you can sort of imagine what it would have been like surrounded by all the other buildings, and that is the Museum of Science and Industry. It was originally built as the Palace of Fine Arts. And like I said, it was built to be permanent. So it actually had a brick and steel substructure. It made it fireproof and better protected the priceless works of art that it had inside during the run of the fair. Nearby, also in its original location, you'll find the Wooded Island, which Frederick Law Olmsted designed to be sort of a beautiful, natural retreat from the hubbub and excitement of the fair. And on it, you'll find the Japanese Garden. During the fair, there were these beautiful Japanese buildings here, but they were all subsequently lost in one way or the other, and the garden was expanded a bit in the 1930s but it felt really surreal to stand in the Japanese garden and to look out and see one of the original buildings of the fair. It gave me a real sense of scale for how impressive the whole thing must have been. You can also see where the midway was, but there isn't really much to see now on the actual stretch. And finally, whenever you look up photos of the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, you'll see images of this gigantic statue, the Statue of the Republic. Unfortunately, that original statue was destroyed by a fire, but you can see a replica that was made as a permanent marker of the spot of the World's Fair. The replica is about one third the height of the original. It's really interesting to think about because this statue is decently big in its own right. To imagine one three times the size seems almost insane to me. It must have been so incredible to see in person. Let's get back to the souvenirs. I'm going to post some interesting links in the video description as well as links to previous videos that I've done on the Chicago World's Fair. So I've already done one unboxing and I would recommend checking out that video. For example, one thing that I shared in that video was this used ticket to gain entry into the Chicago World's Fair. So someone in 1893 had this in their hands and used it to get into the fair. So again, I'll put a link in the video description if you wanna see even more cool stuff from the fair. The stuff I'm opening today is all brand new or stuff that was purchased within the last X amount of months, but that I haven't shared on camera and some that I haven't even opened. Let's start with where to begin. So this is a little gold medal. So on the front you see Christopher Columbus. So the Chicago World's Fair was in 1893, but it was dedicated in 1892. And it was meant to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Columbus's trip to the Americas. So that is why you will see Columbus here. He's relevant to the fair. On the back, it says World's Exposition Chicago 1893. Oh, love it. This is something that someone back then could have bought after visiting the fair. And there were tons of souvenirs made for the Chicago World's Fair. And that's because it was this incredible event that people hadn't experienced before, something of this magnitude. You can look at photographs of the fair today and be amazed. So imagine what it would have been like back then for someone, you know, this is the late 19th century. So this is, imagine being just a regular attendant what had you seen up until that point? So I can imagine people buying souvenirs left and right for themselves, and this would have been one of them. Let's move on to this, and I don't remember what it is. It's peeking. Hi, little guy. This is in a similar vein to the Columbus coin that we saw. This is a souvenir medallion showing the Ferris wheel. And around it, it says, greatest mechanical achievement of the age. 
On the back, we see World's Columbian Exposition, and then we see Administration Building. It's just cool in general because, again, this is something that someone would have purchased for themselves and probably was, and now it's been handed down through the ages, and now it's in my greedy hands. I wanted to get something that had the Ferris wheel on it. This, believe it or not, is where the Ferris wheel was first unveiled. The people in charge of the Chicago World's Fair wanted a modern marvel to rival the Eiffel Tower, which had been unveiled or premiered a few years prior in Paris at the Paris Exposition, the Paris World's Fair of 1889. And this was the winning design. So everything that we know about the Ferris wheel that exists today, this is where it began. Ferris and his wheel that opened here at this fair. So that is such an incredible moment in time for such a cultural icon. Like we all know the Ferris wheel. Ferris did not invent the idea of rotating wheels like this. There were pleasure wheels or amusement wheels before. A much smaller wheel existed like this in New Jersey in, I think, 1892, and that was designed by William Summers. Eventually, William Summers filed a lawsuit against Ferris saying that their designs were so similar, but I guess they were sufficiently different that the lawsuit was never successful. That pleasure wheel in New Jersey was only 50 feet tall, whereas Ferris's wheel at the Chicago World's Fair was 264 feet high. It basically took over the skyline of the fair. This would have been the tallest thing that a lot of people had ever seen, let alone be able to ride and get the vantage point of being up that high. So I wanted something that has the wheel on it, and I also want to share that I designed this, which you can find in my shop. This is an actual photograph of that original Ferris wheel, Modern Marvel, established 1893. Modern Marvel, because that's what it was, and still is looking at photos, it's like, wow, look at that thing. <laughs> to be able to pinpoint to such a specific moment that the idea of the Ferris wheel first became a thing. That modern marvel began in 1893 at the Chicago World's Fair. Next up, let's see. These are some stereo cards that I bought at a few antique stores. Whenever I look through stereo cards, I often try to find something that I can recognize as to the Chicago World's Fair because seeing photos of the fair is amazing, let alone seeing 3D photos of the fair. This one is the Grand Plaza from the Administration Building. On the back it says, a long avenue stretched from the Administration Building toward the Grand Basin. At the right hand, the wanderer passed the large group of foreign buildings, beyond which the Palace of Transportation extended its enormous walls. Thousands of people passed every day over the well-kept walks of this stretch, and many of them were glad to take advantage of a rest on the stone copings at the side. For indeed, it was rather hard on eyes and limbs to keep wandering and wandering all of a hot July day but a short rest generally was sufficient to recuperate the necessary strength of body and mind and the keen appetite for more worlds to conquer. Few cared or dared to leave a single exhibit unobserved to be regretted forever after. This says South Sea Island Maiden, Midway Plaisance. So I liked it because she's smiling at the camera and she's wearing this beautiful traditional wardrobe. This is the Sunken Gardens, and it says on the back, I won't read the whole thing, but there were many choice examples of landscape gardening at the exposition. I've got my beautiful stereoscope. And if you wanna learn more about stereoscopes, I will link to a video where I actually unboxed this, and you can learn more about it and see some really cool old photos. But basically, you get to see things in 3D. Oh my god, this looks so good in 3D. I feel like I'm there. You guys gotta try this. <laughs> Next up... Oh man. I hate that it's folded. A History of the World's Columbian Exposition. So it's a contemporary history. I have to be very, very careful with this. I want to read as much as I can, but without damaging it. I'm going to leave it in its original folding position and do some more research to make sure I handle this with proper care. Drum roll, please. Wow. Look at this beauty. 
This is souvenir ruby glass, sometimes called just souvenir glass. And um, the red color that you see is actually a chemical mixture that was applied to the glass and then heated to give it this beautiful ruby color. And the text that you see was just very easily etched off at that point to say whatever the souvenir was for, in this case, the Chicago World's Fair. If you've been to an antique store, you've probably seen glass like this. You can find it almost anywhere. Sometimes it just has people's names on it. But when I was in Chicago in an antique store there, I found Chicago World's Fair souvenir. This would have been something that someone visiting the fair would have bought for themselves. This type of souvenir, souvenir glass was extremely popular at the turn of the century and I think it's so beautiful. First, let's look inside the agricultural building. I bought this because I want to see in 3D what it would have been like to be inside the building. Oh my God. Oh, look at all those flags. I don't know what animal that is, like a sheep or a Himalayan goat. I think I just made that up. I mean, look how far it goes. It's like being inside a mall. So what you guys are seeing right now, I get to see in 3D. How cool is that? This is Scientific American, which still exists today, so probably sounds familiar to you. I decided to buy it because it combines two things that I have in the past found interesting and made videos about. So Scientific American was co-founded by Alfred Eli Beach, who was the visionary behind Beach Pneumatic Transit, which was technically the first subway system in New York City. And it is a fascinating story and I made a video about it and I will link to that in the video description. And this particular edition is from 1891, so one year before the dedication and two years before the opening of the fair. And it says, progress of work on the Chicago World's Fair buildings and grounds. I find that so interesting. See page 340. Oh, here it is. The site of the next World's Fair as it now appears, with the water surfaces, grounds, and buildings laid out, and the work thereon in various stages of progress, forms the subject of our first page illustration. It is expected that this portion of the grounds will be covered with scores of buildings, presenting an exceedingly picturesque array in which will be embraced every variety of architectural taste or fancy. Comparisons are constantly and almost necessarily made of the prospects for the attainment by the managers of the Chicago World's Fair of a success equal to that achieved by the French Exposition of 1889. It is already certain that the buildings will cover twice the area and cost twice as much as did those at Paris. It is estimated that about 30,000 tons of staff will be used in the finishing of the buildings, this material being employed on nearly all the structures. Staff is what was used uh, sort of like a plaster to make these buildings. This edition is not just about the Chicago World's Fair. I'm seeing tons of different stuff in here. Dangers of galvanized iron water pails. Leprosy, its spread and causation. The electric headlight. Hmm. The use of electric headlights has now become quite general in Indiana. Nearly all the roads entering Indianapolis now having several in service. What a time to be alive. Influence of surroundings in producing insanity. Wow. Edison's electric railway motor. Mr. Edison has explained to the New York Herald his belief that this is at present. Like Mr. Edison is someone who's like alive and just like talking and inventing things like presently. Like to the readers of this who read this when it came out, we're time traveling right now. And those are all the souvenirs that I have for you today from the White City, from the Chicago World's Fair. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video.